Welcome back to the channel, you guys. In today's video, we're gonna be going over my new kayak, the Salty PDL. Um, I've been putting this video off for a little bit because I wanted to get as many trips as I could under my belt in the Salty, uh, just to get a feel for it and really, you know, figure out what I do and don't like about it um, by experiencing what I do and don't like about it on the water. And it's been close to a month now that I've been fishing out of it, um, going on lots of trips. I've put in a lot of hours on it already, caught a lot of fish out of it. And uh, I think I have formulated kind of like my opinions on the kayak. There's some good, there's some bad, and uh, we're gonna head out to the garage, show you the kayak, and talk a little bit about what I do and don't like. You guys, so right here is the Salty PDL 120. She's 12 feet long got a 34.5 inch beam right here um, that's just how wide it is and it's weighing in at 104 pounds so the first pro right off the bat is gonna be the weight of this thing 104 pounds is really light compared to some of the other kayaks I fished out of and that just makes so many things easy as far as like unloading and loading it's very just very simple and you can do it by yourself so if you're like a solo guy getting it on and off isn't gonna be an issue for you um, and if you've got a partner that goes with you, then it's just the, all the much quicker. But the weight is super clutch, super convenient, just makes things easy, like I said. Uh, the next thing on the list is going to be the speed. So with the 34.5 inch beam, it's a little bit more narrow than some of the other kayaks that you could uh, see as an option when it comes to fishing. But that makes it super fast on the water, along with its light weight, you can really get going. The PDL drive is awesome. It, it creates a lot of torque down there or thrust, I don't know what I'm saying. But uh, you can get up to like seven miles per hour just depending on what the current is doing, what the tide is doing, and uh, the wind. So like seven miles per hour with the wind and the, and the tide, but <clears throat> if you're going against it, it's a little slower, like five. And that's honestly really pushing it. Like if you're really pedaling like that, you're gonna get winded. And I mean, just depending on how good you are, like your cardio training, maybe you can maintain that. But for me, cruising just at a solid pace, the easy chill uh, pedal is gonna be like four, four to th or three to four miles per hour. So just depending on, like I said, the, the tide and stuff, but very fast kayak in comparison to like the autopilot, which is what I was fishing out of. And it's just really, you know, you're stuck at the max of the motor. With this, if you're really trying to go, you can push yourself and, and really go. Next thing I wanna talk about is maneuverability. Um, at first, I was a little like bad at you know controlling the the steering and the rudder and stuff. But after about a week, I got really used to it and found that it's honestly kind of seamless when it comes to maneuvering and stuff. I can spend a lot more time fishing instead of worrying about you know my positioning on the water with the pedals. My hands are always free, and um, once you get used to your adjustments and you can lock the rudder in place, it's all pretty easy stuff. Moving on, I wanna talk about the stability on this thing. Um, I was really worried at first because of that 34.5 inch beam. I was just like, man, this is super narrow. It's not gonna be very stable. But in all honesty, I'm like 260, 270 pounds. I hover in between there. And uh, this thing is very stable. Like I'm a bigger guy and it's, it works perfectly fine for me. I can stand up um, when I'm accessing like my storage up here, whether I've got the bait bucket or if I need to grab the net. Um, I can move to the front very easily and grab my stuff and go back to the seat. And I've never once been worried like, oh gosh, I'm about to fall out of this thing. And that being said, like, <clears throat> I know I fish in the marsh a lot, but we even took this out to the jetties and we were out there in the deep water with, with the nice swells and stuff and it wasn't, it wasn't so bad at all. Lastly, I wanna talk about the uh, seat and the storage on this kayak. So the seat is really nice. Um, it's very comfy. I feel like a lot of kayaks nowadays have nice comfy seats, but I thought it was worth mentioning just because um, if you're gonna be spending lots of time on the water and you're kayak fishing anywhere from like three to four hours, however long you personally fish, sometimes I'm out there for like five to six hours and you wanna be sitting in something that's not gonna leave your butt sore or your back hurting. And um, you know, because this is a fishing kayak, but so is this thing up here. It is designed for fishing. It has a rod holder, but that seat is like on the deck. It's really cheaply made. It'll leave your butt wet, your back sore, and you just aren't gonna be having a good time. You don't wanna be swampy like that for uh, long periods of time. So seat is definitely a plus. Moving on to the storage is going to be the um, rod holders over here that are stock. You get three of them. If you're gonna be using these as like storage though for uh, when you're in transit, from your spot to the launch or whether whatever your situation is uh, especially in the salt water this is gonna splash up and hit your reels 
if you're fishing freshwater lakes i don't think it's as big of an issue but with the salt water you do want to try and watch out and i would suggest making use of the little back storage area here uh, this H crate junior or the small one. I'm not sure what they're actually called But it's the smaller H crate it fits back here perfectly. You just pop pop your rods in there They're high enough up that the salts not going to get them plus you got this extra free storage to keep bug bug spray the uh, The boga grip and I put my backpack and water back there Also, you have this little dry box here I think I mentioned this earlier, but figured I would mention it again because of the storage. So yeah, that's gonna be all the pros. Now let's go ahead and talk about the cons. The first con is gonna be the working depth of the actual drive system. So the PDL drive does stick out pretty far under the kayak and you need about knee deep water for it to work properly. You can kind of like force yourself through shallow mud and stuff like that by just like kind of, I don't know, it just feels like extra resistance on the kayak, but it, uh, it's definitely not recommended for long distances because it just gets really annoying. Um, so you're probably gonna be ending up pulling up that drive and just push pulling around. It's a small problem that a lot of kayaks with drives like this have, so it's not really that big of a deal, but it does, it does annoy me, so I wanted to mention it as a con. The next thing we're gonna talk about as a con is gonna be the turning. So turning this thing can be a major pain sometimes, especially if you're trying to turn in reverse just got a super small uh, rudder back here so as you can see well as you can see the bad boy is only like uh, that's, that's shorter that's like the length of my fingers right it's very long but it's just super narrow the turning ability of it is is not very great and especially when that thing kind of kicks up on its own if the rudder is not fully deployed which it, it kind of kicks up when you're in the shallow it makes turning very, very difficult, like almost impossible where you just wanna put the thing up and, and push pull around. Another con on the kayak is gonna be this little paddle holder system. Um, it's very difficult to work with, like I'll be honest, you really have to like pull it. Like I had to grab leverage and hold the kayak down and really rip it, but I just feel like it's unnecessarily tough to do that. Like they built this for Hercules or something. Um, if you guys get a kayak like this or if you fished out of an old town kayak, this paddle holder is on all of them and it works the exact same way. Just very annoying. I would like to see a better system than this, but I will say, I mean, maybe like it'll make sure your paddle never falls out. But oftentimes I just don't even put the safety latch. I leave it like this and I just deal with the kayak or the paddle falling off and I'll grab it. The next con is gonna be the position of this like rudder control system right here. So um, me personally, I fish like this with I, where I crank with my uh, right hand and I twitch and cast with my left. So as you can see right here, if you're cranking like this and you need to make an adjustment with the rudder, I have to grab this, make my adjustment, and then go back. I can't tell you how many times I've had a fish that just times his bite perfectly to where I'm making my adjustment. And I've got my hand like this and I, I have to set the hook without reeling in my slack. And uh, a lot of times I lose fish. I can seriously say, that it's been a problem within the first month of me using this, like multiple trips I've had that issue. And um, it's just kind of unfortunate. So what I would like to see is either have this on both sides where you can just kind of do whatever, or make it an option for whoever's buying the kayak to either have it on the left or the right side, because that is a big deal. And um, it's one of the things that really bugged me about this. The last con I wanna talk about is going to be the seat like storage anchor system. I don't know what you wanna call that, but just taking the seat on and off. I know I was talking about how the seat is super comfy, but I know one thing that a lot of guys like to do is take their seat off when they're driving from like the water to their house or wherever they store their kayak. And um, taking the seat on and off is honestly like a, a major pain. It gets stuck when you're trying to do it. And uh, I just, I prefer, I leave it on now because I, I really don't want to deal with taking it on and off. It adds like just an extra amount of time to loading and unloading when really you just want to be spending your time fishing, uh, especially now with like beating the heat and trying to get out there and fish super early. Um, you, all, you have a very small window of a bite and you just don't want to waste your time fiddling and getting stuff ready. So I leave the seat on. If you're a guy who likes to take your seat off, then it's gonna be it's gonna be something that probably will annoy you. Maybe you're a little more patient, but me personally, I don't have I don't have the patience for the seat system. But that's pretty much everything I have to say about the Salty PDL. So let's head inside and uh, do the outro. So overall, the Salty PDL I would have to say is just a, a really great kayak at its price point, coming in at just under two thousand, like nineteen hundred bucks. I mean, the thing is a beast. I will say. 
it doesn't come with a paddle so it might hit 2000 if you're buying accessories if you want the h-crate if you i mean you're going to need a paddle there's situations where you just need it uh, you're going to get close to 2000 but it's a solid kayak and uh, it being designed for fishing it, it just it's really seamless like after you get used to maneuvering and using the the drive system to pedal against the current or pedal against the wind it, it is a uh, it's pretty you know fishing is is like seamless i don't really know how else to put it it doesn't feel like a chore you know having to maneuver and paddle around like all all the time finding spots to sit and kind of dead stick it you can just move around the marsh or or the back like wherever you're fishing um and fish and not really worry about you know how you're going to get to a certain spot you just go and it, and it feels easy um overall i would say it's like a b and that's really high praise because i don't think i fished out of a kayak that is an a the closest thing to a is like a b plus which i gave to the autopilot because it's just the definition of seamless fishing you don't really have to do anything the the motor takes care of you and you just fish um but even that's not an a because it's just too slow too heavy and there's too much to worry about as far as batteries go and just all of that deal electronics on the water it's just it, it, it's a it's a headache sometimes so I think that's going to do it for this one. If you guys enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up for me. Uh, if you learned anything, give it a thumbs up. And for more fishing content like this, go ahead and smack the subscribe button. I hope you guys have a great rest of y'all's day. Peace.